This program on women in science, technology, and business has been brought to you by Zoho Corporation. Hello and welcome. I'm Kamla. My guest today is Devika Chavla. She is Director of Engineering at Netflix and is also a musician, composer and a singer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Kamla. How are you? I'm doing fine. So Devika, music and technology, a potent combination. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was through technology that you discovered music in some ways. In some ways, a rediscovery. So I, I've been singing since I was a kid. Um, I loved it, wanted to do that, but I um, also wanted to do computer science. I grew up in India and it was a very hot and happening field and I got into that. Uh, and then um, came to the U.S. for uh, undergrad and took computer science. And uh, through one of my computer science classes, we started looking at um, recording audio and processing audio and um, we had to do like an interesting project and so there I hooked up with this friend of mine and we created a music track which is a techno and Indian vocal classical vocal music track and I was like wow this is really cool and so yeah that really kind of got me back into it um, and it was kind of unexpected. Hmm. So you said that uh, you studied uh, computers uh, in India, it was hot and happening. Yeah. So I'm assuming this is in school. High school, that's right, yeah. So um, what years are this? Yeah, so um, let me try and think back. So, wow, that's really hard. So is it I think the 80s, 80s? Uh, late 80s uh, is when, you know, we started in sixth grade, when I was in sixth grade. Uh, we had these BBC microcomputers. In sixth grade, in yeah. the late 80s in India, you had computers? Yeah, so it was really fun. Um, what school did you go to? I went to modern school, Barakamba Road. Um, in Delhi? In New Delhi, yes. Okay. And so uh, we learned programming in basic, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I got involved in the computer club, and um, we used to have lots of interesting um, symposiums that I would attend, and kind of really got into that. And so I uh, chose computer science uh, as my focus area in the, in the 11th and the 12th, and then that's kind of how it started. That is unusual. Yeah, it's really different. And it, it was unusual that time, too. It was um, just getting started. And you know, in India, it's very, um, there's a lot of focus on science and, and math. And you're either a doctor or you're a, an engineer and, or mechanical engineer. And, and so I, I kind of want to do something different. And um, I really enjoyed the computer science classes. I felt that it was very logical. Um, you know, I, I could follow along very well. I, I kind of really excelled at it, and so that kind of kept me going forward as well. Were there other girls in the class? No, I was the only one. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was the only so one. So how, how difficult or easy was it for you to be with the boys? Uh, it was fine, you know. It was actually pretty okay, and it, it helped because I was also the best, so it, it, um, it made it much easier, and uh, of course, um, the teachers are very supportive. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. Like it was fun being the only girl, actually. <laughs> so. How, uh, is your father an engineer? My father's a mechanical engineer. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and your mother? She uh, is a. I would like to say like an entrepreneur. So she started her own um, company. She was manufacturing wires and cables and running a small um, factory in India in New Delhi. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, it was uh, it was nice to kind of have. Um, sort of both, both kind of like a business perspective from her side and then more of a scientific perspective from my dad's side mm. uh, while I was growing up. So you knew early on that you would probably embrace science yes. as, as your field? Yeah, I did that. And I think as I did computer science, um, that, that actually propelled me towards that. Like if it were just for the math and the physics or the biology, somehow I was not as interested, but computer science was really interesting to me for whatever reason, and I just kind of followed that. So how did you find out more about computer science, you know, because in, the internet was not there? Yeah, no, it was not there that time. Um, I think um, I was lucky, uh, one of my uncles uh, was also very much into it. So he used to get all these magazines and he had a stack of magazines in his room. So I would go to his house and pick some of them up and start reading and then um, in some of the, the events in, in school, um, you know, I got the chance to participate in quizzes and, and kind of talk more about some of the, the stuff that I was learning. Um, so it was the, both the, the computer club as well as having this uncle who was sort of like, sort of like a sounding board for me was very helpful because my parents didn't really know computers. Uh, but then towards the end, they kind of bought me um, like a computer at home. What, um, what computer? It was a PC-AT-286. Um, 
So it was it was nice. It was this huge thing with this like five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and you know it was it was nice to be able to have that special time to to kind of develop things and learn things in my own. So I think that also made a big difference. So then uh, you also did an unusual thing because you came uh, to the U.S. to for your undergrad, not That's right. grad. That's right. Yeah. And uh, why did you choose Georgetown? Um, so I came and visited here uh, of like. And when I was in 11th grade, because I was thinking about coming here, my oh, so uncles, you yeah, my uncles have been here for a long time. So my dad's brother, um, one of them was in D.C., uh, and then one of them was here um, in, in California. In California. So, but I, I visited a few universities, and I really liked Georgetown. It was uh, the city was beautiful, the university was very beautiful, the architecture was stunning, uh, and I felt that the, the student-teacher ratio was nice. Uh, they weren't like it wasn't a huge university; it was just the right size for me. It's a Jesuit school. Yeah, yeah. So it was just very interesting from a cultural perspective too. There was a lot of international students, um, and there was a lot of energy there that I, I just really loved it. And so, so it's pretty much I just kind of followed what I what I felt good about, and that sort of like with computer science or with music or with the university and that's sort of been the journey like just sort of following what I love and where my heart is somewhat. <laughs> so did you have to unlearn anything when you came to Georgetown because in India mm -hmm. we study mm -hmm. differently, yes. you're taught differently. Yes totally. Um, so the, the worst day at Georgetown I can still remember is I, um, I had a history paper um, and I got like a C minus on it. Like so I, like I told did you, like you fall I was, off the chair. I did. I was like, <laughs> I was very sad and I was very depressed. And I and was confused. like, how can what what is going on? Like, how is this possible? And and so I spoke to my teacher, and he was like, well, you just told me what the books already say. Like, I don't care, and I already know that. So tell me what you think about it, and what is your interpretation? And so I think that was really a turning point in in terms of how I started to think about learning uh, here in the U.S. and um, how we can sort of apply what we're learning. And It's okay to share your thoughts. It's okay to share your thoughts. It's okay to not know. It's okay to have like an open book exam where the questions are really tough and you know you just have to really connect the dots and figure out what the right answer is and sometimes there isn't a right answer. It's just what you think should be done. Uh, and so that was I think the biggest transformation and I think as that's what uh, makes it so different being here compared to being in India. It's mm. just that um, that thinking process and that sort of um, independence in being able to uh, to take it wherever you want to take it. Mm. Let me go back to Delhi and studying there and studying computer science. Was it unusual for you to be studying computer science and wanting to pursue a computer science uh, course? Um, I think it was unusual um, just because it was a new field. Mm. Um, I, I do think a lot of women were also doing science. I think science in general is kind of, uh, we over-index on, on it as far as, you know, careers. And, over-index. And, yeah. You must be in the search <laughs> industry. <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was unusual because it was a new field and uh, it was kind of uncertain where things were going to go. Like today there are, um, you know, it's a booming field. Like we're doing so much in software and hardware. And that, at that time, it wasn't so clear. So there was a bit of uncertainty there. Um, and then also, um, you know, there, there are other families in India, certainly in, um, in kind of my, my mom's side of the family where girls weren't really that much into studying. And so I think some of that influence came from my, my dad's side where I saw my uncles had done really well and um, they were, you know, working hard, they were studying hard and edu great education was really important. So. Um, so I think, yeah, it was unusual for, for some reasons, but um, if I look at um, kind of my dad's side of the family, it was different. So it was different for different reasons, mm. yeah. Mm. So then you finished your studies at Georgetown. Right. How did you come here? Um, so I came here because a friend of mine was working at this company called Ink to Me, mm. uh, and they were looking for um, engineers, software engineers, and, um, and I said I'd like to apply, and so I came and interviewed here. Uh, with Where was Ink to Me located? So Ink to Me was in San Mateo, mm. um, and so I interviewed with two groups: their their search division and their traffic server division, um, and they both made me offers. And I had to choose which one I would want to work with, and I chose search because I feel like um, I liked the sort of customer facing aspect of it, and the the traffic server or the networking product was kind of more of a a back end, more of a back end. But search play. was also sexy then. Search was very cool, um, yeah. But I, it just felt like 
um, somehow it spoke to me more and then I so I followed that again mm. uh, and then um, you know, I kind of built up a team there. I started um, leading a team and built uh, some great products there that um, I'm really excited that I was able to work on. Uh, and then um, Ink to Me was acquired by Yahoo, uh, and so I was at Yahoo for quite some time. And then, how many years? Um, I think for about five years at Yahoo. So okay. yeah. So you spent quite a lot of time in the search industry. Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what is it that you had to? learn you know culturally because you came here as a mm -hmm. young person so you had already gone through the school experience right, right. but when you're leading a team mm -hmm. uh, did you have to again relearn unlearn yeah it's uh, it's very different sort of challenges um, you know when you go from sort of doing things on your own to starting to lead a team and uh, it's about um, you know finding the right person for that role it's about kind of motivating the team um, and making sure um, they are interested in what they're doing um, and it's also about kind of having a vision and kind of a plan and making sure there's there's a way to get to that plan which is so you're you kind of like um, you know you have um, this this framework and this team uh, at your disposal and um, and you can kind of direct it and take it where you want to go at the same time it's hard because um, you know it's um, not easy because sometimes when people um, aren't performing the way you want them to, it's tough, um, especially if you are attached to them personally also. Um, so that's tough and it's also tough to, um, you know, make sure that um, what you're doing is sort of lining up with what the goals are. And so uh, it was, um, it was a, a great experience. We had a few mentors at ink to me too that really helped and it was good to understand um, that other people were also going through similar challenges that you weren't kind of this only person that had problems to deal with. Mm. Um, so it was, uh, it was just a natural progression and for me I feel like um, I'm a better team leader and executor um, uh, um, compared to being like um, an individual engineer. Like over time I feel like I've, that's something that is um, where I can excel more mm. uh, and really make a bigger difference. Who was your mentor? Oh, who were your mentors? Yeah, um, so not one person, different people uh, through the course of my lifetime. Um, you know, I had mentors in college um, who were, you know, great professors um, who really kind of taught me that, um, you know, sometimes you just don't know all the things and you're just trying to figure things out and it's okay to, to have that. Um, and then um, I think to me we um, had um, different um, directors and VPs uh, lead coaching teams or mentor different groups um, and so they had very interesting perspectives and the people that I appreciate the most are the people who like to listen a lot and then they sort of um, think deeply and they're not they're not always trying to tell you what to do but they kind of ask good questions and I think that's the the the, the thing that I appreciate most about some of these mentors that adding to me um, yeah and then I you know I feel like you learn from everybody that you come across and everybody has some great things that you can learn from and um, and that's what I try to do. Have you mentored anybody? Um, I have, um, yeah, some people on my teams, um, you know, who are trying to kind of get into specific roles or uh, have certain questions or challenges. Um, also been involved in a few um, women in technology um, kind of events and where people have sort of followed up and I've kept the conversation going and had all just informal conversations and discussions with people who have um, ideas and want to do things and possibly uh, are struggling for whatever reason and it's just good to have a conversation and a different pers provide a different perspective and I think that's all it is really to, to be there to listen and to um, maybe think back and relate back to something that might be relevant and something that could help guide somebody else. Um, you know, there's, there's really, it's really all about sort of um, listening and thinking about how you could kind of provide some other information to them. So. Have you ever proactively gone and uh, asked for a promotion? Or because that's something that's hard to do, whether you're a man or a woman. Yeah, um, I did. Yeah, so I did um, at Yahoo. I did, um, and I asked um, how far I was from getting promoted to the next level. Who um, taught you to use that phrase? How far I was from getting? Because that's a great way to ask. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I think um, I'm not sure who taught me that, but I 
I guess I saw that. I, I see that there are, um, you know, th there's there's cer certain maturity uh, in terms of um, for for every role, uh, and there's a certain level of execution for every role. Um, and if you see the people around you who are in certain roles, um, either you, f you you see why you're not there, um, or you if you don't know, you ask why. And so I think maybe that's why I asked, like, you know, what else do you think? And I asked my manager, what else do you think I could do to get the next level? And um, what else could, could I be doing differently or better? Um, and sometimes, um, you know, the roles, um, it, it's a hard, it's very subjective. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it depends on the specific role that you're in, what the needs of the team are, uh, what the needs of the company are. So it isn't really always personal. It's really about how you fit in in that framework and, and how your role or your job, the job that you're doing is helping the company get to the next level so so there it's it's complicated it's it's not straightforward um, and so uh, I've learned that over time and I think I used to be more impatient before uh -huh. you impatient yeah I think I was a little more impatient um, and I always I was competitive like I, I was always first in school I always wanted to get ahead I wanted to get ahead in the sense who has the treat your father your mother uh, I don't know. I'd say my dad was um, academically more successful, uh, but my mother was also successful sort of in her business, uh, like kind of running and being independent uh, there. Um, I don't know, actually. I don't think I would say either of them, like... But you remember being competitive. I remember being competitive, yeah. But that's changed over time as you start to see more things and you realize that um, there's, there's more to life um, and it's about really enjoying what you're doing and feeling like you're making a difference um, and you're contributing meaningfully to something. It's not so much about titles and sort of, you know, um, yeah, it's, it, titles can be kind of pretty um, This is in hindsight. Fake. Yeah, in hindsight, yes, <laughs> right. Okay. That's what I'm saying, it's, it's, been a, it's been a journey and it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, especially kind of when you think about music also, so then it also puts things in perspective. So it's, that's a nice segue, you brought in music. <laughs> so uh, you were at Yahoo and so you learned music uh, as a kid. Yes. And I you did. went to your parents and said you want to learn music? I did, yes. Uh, it was, Is that unusual? Um, I don't know. Again, I'm, I, but I just came home from school one day. I think I was seven years old. Uh, and I told my mom, I want to learn to sing. And she was like, Are you sure you don't want to dance? I'm like, Yes, I'm really sure. She said, it, dancing is really cool like it's you know you you learn so many different things it's very expressive I said no I want to sing uh, and that was it so then um, she took me to like this Academy where you start to learn and uh, I learned playing on the harmonium you learn the seven notes and then some simple compositions on that and then after that bass was established and moved over into more Hindustani classical music um, which was really fun too um, I had a teacher who would come at home and teach me so I learned the basics of a lot of different rags um, and some basic uh, Indian sort of thals and structures of that. Um, and Thal is beat. Thal is beat, right. And then I would perform in school on stage, um, and, but everybody hated it because it was, it was classical music. It was really boring for them, and I didn't quite get that for a long time. And I thought that, wow, this is really discouraging. Like, this, this, this isn't cool. Um, and then one day I happened to be called on stage and I thought well let's try something different uh, and um, A.R. Rahman had come up with this song called Choti Si Asha mm. and somehow I'd learned that song and I played that on on stage and people came running in from outside when I was singing that so it was really a kind of a very enlightening moment for me that oh it's it's about the content it's about what people can identify with and what's familiar and what they can enjoy so you need a hook, you need a beat. Uh, it's not just about the classical music. The classical music is a great bass and you need to develop an ear for it, but not, pe not everybody enjoys that. Mm. So. So, so you got your first taste of success. I did. Okay. <laughs> so does that explain why you have kind of, all the albums you've created, uh, there's this lounge kind of uh, ambiance mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. It's not pure Hindustani classical mm -hmm. music. Right, right. It's got more of the pop element yeah so I, I always I think I um, best describe myself as somebody who does fusion and that's because I like to combine like the Indian element and the the classical or the folk element with um, a more Western sound and production 
um, because that's what makes it fun and I also think people enjoy it and I enjoy that it's kind of challenging to do that so so yeah I've done some lounge tracks I've, I've done like a contemporary Sufi album I've also collaborated with a, a rapper so it's that just Bohemia rap. yeah that's Bohemia so we did some tell tracks. us about Bohemia because he's a San Francisco based rapper that's right he is so we uh, we met after um, he heard my first song which was um, for my first album which was Candy and Nena and that was Candy Candy and Nena so which it means, means my eyes speak Hmm. Uh, and so that song was a really big hit. It played on MTV in India, and um, Sony licensed it. And it was in all the Sufi compilations with, um, you know, um, Rabbi Shergil or Kailash Khair or Rahat Fateh Ali Khan. So it was a very nice sort of song that um, did very well. And so Bohemia saw that, and he reached out to me, and he said, hey, here, in here in San Francisco. And so he connected with me, and we were like, oh, let's jam together. Uh, so we jammed in, in Redwood City, actually, um, in a studio. Uh, and we worked on, like, he had a hook, and I just sort of uh, came up with, like, a line and some lyrics, and we kind of did a rough recording, and, and then that was kind of the start of it. And he then built some more rap around it. I, I did some more kind of vocals around it, and that was our first song. And so then um, then he was doing his album. And Is he classically trained? No, he's not. He I just has a so. strong sense of music. Yeah, he's he's been playing for a long time too, but um, I, I don't know that he's done classical music, uh, not that I know of uh, anyways. And uh, he, um, so then we recorded another song, which was a, uh, kind of the main track for his album, which was called Ek Tera Pyar. Which uh, means your uh, love? Ek this, this one love. This, this your one, love. one, Ek is one, your love. Yeah, yeah. your one love. Oh. Yeah. Um, Sounds almost reggae-ish. Yeah, <laughs> so so we did that, and that was um, a big hit too. It was uh, you know top of the charts. So Universal Music released that, uh, and then we did another collaboration for his next album um, that was also released by Sony Music. So, so you've done three songs. I've done three tracks with him. Yeah, and okay. we we talk often, and we want to do some more collaborations, and so we'll we'll see what else comes up. So your first album was called Devika. It was called Devika. That's okay. right. Okay, yeah. and then your second album was Sari Rath. That's right, Sari. Rath. And and uh, you've got a third album coming up? No, I've been doing more singles. Um, Why? Uh, I feel like it gives me more freedom to experiment with different styles uh, because an album sort of, um, in order for it to really uh, flow well, it, you know, it has to have a, a core theme and, you know, the, the, it, it needs to make sense structurally and thematically. Uh, and sometimes it, it kind of... Um, it's hard to always do that, and then it takes a little longer than I would like. So I, I feel like I want to do more uh, quicker songs and be able to collaborate more with different artists, um, and that gives me just more pleasure. So I did another song with um, Aman Ali Khan and Ayan Ali Khan. They play Saro there in India, and so they were in San Francisco, um, and then we decided to create another song, and that was um, called Hole Hole, which, which means slowly, 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 slowly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Aman and uh, Ayan Ali are sons of uh, Ustad Amjali Khan, Khansad, right? Okay, and yeah. he plays the sarod. They play the sarod, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how did that collaboration happen? Did you know them before? I, yeah, I knew them. I had met them. They're friends, um, and um, but we had never sort of gotten the chance to really work together, and we wanted. Have they to... ever done any loungy music? They've done some. Yeah, they've done okay. some uh, very interesting tracks in fact one of their songs is um, Agna More which is kind of in the similar sort of genre and uh, it's nice because the road lends itself to being very soulful and it can be it can work very well with that kind of a feel got you yeah. so uh, you uh, you're creating uh, singles now but mm -hmm. you also took a break I did uh, for three years yes and did music yes that's how right. did you then end up at Netflix yes yeah, so I um, I think I was sort of, um, Netflix reached out to me and I was actually... You're one lucky person. Everybody's <laughs> reaching out to Bo no, Bohemia fun. reached out to yeah, you. Yeah, it was good fun. I'm lucky. Yeah, you're right. I'm really lucky. Um, yeah, it just happened. Um, you know, they were looking for um, somebody um, for leading their messaging team. Um, and they reached out to me. And at that point, I was also thinking about joining a startup, which is in the music space, because um, I felt that um, I was starting to miss some of the... The, the high um, productivity and energy that comes in a tech company, which is very different from the music world where things are very, um, they're kind of more laid back and things, They're intense in a different kind of way. They're intense in a different kind of way. So I think I was, given that I had been doing tech for so long, I feel like I was starting to miss that. Uh, so the timing was just right and I came in and, and met people at Netflix that I really liked. Um, and I think it was really 
the people and, and the culture, the fact that they're very smart but also very nice to work with, that really kind of made that sort of decision for me. And then I've been there for more than three years, like almost four years actually. And you also have uh, worked with Apple? I have worked with Apple, yes. So um, the director of music for Apple, who is responsible for creating all the music that you see on the Apple, all Apple products, um, he was looking to create a Bollywood trailer for their iMovie app. Um, so it was one of the nine sort of template trailers that you could just plug and play and create like your own video on, on the mobile apps. Uh, and so he found my stuff and um, he reached out. We had a good conversation. Um, and then we flew down to Los Angeles um, and recorded in Hans Zimmer Studios. Uh, oh, Hans Zimmer. Yeah, and, and he has a great studio facility and so we kind of got the chance to go there and record there. Uh, and it was nice because um, he was coming at it from a kind of a, like a Western uh, musician's perspective who wanted to create a very over-exaggerated Bollywood track. And, uh, and I kind of was able to sort of understand that and create the lyrics and the melody to kind of give him some of that feel. Uh, and so we iterated on that for you know, a month or two and then created this track, which is very fun. It was like a short, like two minute track, which is very interesting. So you can find it? You can find it on, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's on the iMovie app. Okay. So. My final question, because you brought up Bollywood. Sure. Do you have any plans of uh, going to? Um, I would like to, yes. It just requires me to be in Mumbai. Um, in fact, um, I am speaking with a few um, movie directors and producers to see how we can collaborate to create something. Um, there's also a lot of work happening for YouTube productions now, and so um, they're also looking and to And Netflix, too. Netflix, too, yeah. But um, otherwise, also, there's a lot of interesting um, content being created for um, other mediums. And so um, I'm going to look at um, seeing what, what I can create. It's it's. Um, it's nice to be able to have more control over your music and so I think that for me is the biggest part to be able to represent myself the way I feel is best and, and most um, honest and, and me because I wouldn't want to do a song where the lyrics are some random raunchy lyrics or I mean I just, I just wouldn't be able to, to do justice to that and I don't think it would be me and so um, the challenge is finding something where I can be me and that's the, that's the search. Devika, thank you so much for thank stopping you. by and talking to us. Thank you. Hole, hole, you'll get to Hollywood, uh, Bollywood. Yes, I hope so. Maybe it's a slip of a tongue, maybe yeah, Hollywood, maybe. you never know. Thank you. <laughs> if you missed any of our shows, you can catch them on our YouTube channel. We'll be back again next week with another episode. Until then, goodbye. This program on women in science, technology, and business has been brought to you by Zoho Corporation.